Hi everybody, Martin here, and we're going to be looking and restoring this 1500cc Matchbox Series number 15 Volkswagen Beetle from 1968. It's in pretty rough condition, as you can probably see. It's a bit more than play-worn, so this is ripe for a uh, restoration or refurbishment. One thing I've got to remember to say is that if I restore it exactly the same, it's a restoration. If I change anything, like the colours or the stickers or whatever, it becomes a custom resto. <laughs> Someone's pointed that out in the comment section uh, that that is the case. So this is gonna be a restoration, I think. I don't think I'm gonna do anything extra to it. So welcome to this video and roll the title sequences. Right, here we go then. This is our little Volkswagen Beetle number 15 on the Lesney Matchbox series. It's pretty play-worn, as you can probably see there. The underneath is very tarnished, and uh, the wheels are actually bent, as you can probably see there, and they've lost their silver paint on the uh, hubcap, so to speak. Plenty of paint chipped off here, although there's nothing broken on it by the looks of things. So I'm quite happy with that. There doesn't appear to be any crashes, uh, any scratches in the windscreen at all. Maybe just a slight sand will sort them out. And uh, the paintwork, as you know, is very, very chipped and it's uh, an off-white colour. And as you can see there, it's got some sort of number plate on the front now. And I don't know if you can see the headlights drop in there. It seems that it might have been rammed into a wall quite a few times and the front clip there, as you can probably see, maybe just bent back a little bit because, as you can see, the, uh, the bodywork can actually come away there. It's only got one rivet this at the back there, as you can probably see and we're gonna to need to drill that out, obviously, but uh, as you can see, that front has probably been smashed into the wall a few times. So we'll just have to probably address that and bend it out a little bit when we come to refit the base. It has got the towing hook on it, uh, and as you can see, under the bumper, it's tend to have been pushed down. I will keep that on, but if I can't bend that back up in place, I may just put a dab of glue in it. It's got the 137 number on the side there. I don't know whether that denotes a famous race car or something, but... Uh, I'm gonna be hopefully reproducing that graphic on my uh, water slide transfers. And it's got quite a bit of fair detail on it, so um, without further ado, let's get it stripped down and have a look inside. Right, so I just take my drill here, as you know, it's a battery drill. It's a nice sharp drill, this one, just to take the head off of this post. And as you can see there, just with a little twist, it comes off uh, uh, a treat, this one, so uh, I'm very happy with that. So, very basic interior here, as you can see. Uh, it's all there, it's all clean, no driver in this one. Left-hand driver, as you can see. Just a bit dirty and grubby. And the windshield and the windows are held in by a rivet, which I'm gonna need to drill out, so let's get on and do that. Gotta be very careful here, you want a shallow depth drill, and being very, very careful not to take too much out and to drill the roof through, we don't want that. And as you can see, I'm going very, very slow here and just moving the drill from side to side now and again just to remove the top burrs as I've just done there. I'm just going to get a little thin flat-bladed screwdriver just in there and just gently tease it in there to pop the rivet and the windshield should come off in one complete piece. No cracks at all, very happy with that. And all that's going to need is a basic clean. It's got some detail on it, this. it's um, It's got a little pair of wiper blades there and also a little rear view mirror. And uh, the body inside is a little bit corroded in places. We'll just give that a clean up. And as I say, this is ready now for stripping. So let's get on with that. Right, well, before we actually put the paint stripper on this, I'm just gonna remove these numbers with a blade because sometimes the paint stripper won't actually permeate the transfer so I know these only look like they're paper but I will take them off it only takes a couple of seconds so uh, and underneath we can see the paint paint there which is an off-white color so I'm going to try and match that in the, uh, the Tamiya paints that I've actually got and as you can see how easy that paint scraped off there so I'm hoping it's not going to prove too much of a problem because the older paint sometimes can actually be quite hard to get off so it seems to come off all right so let's get rid of these wheels now and again, these are the thin wire wheels, and uh, these are the rear ones. So you just lift the plastic up, as I've done 
uh, in my previous videos and then you sort of manhandle the, the axle out of the plastic clip so to speak and then you can withdraw the wheels. These axles are a little bit bent. The front ones are a little bit more troublesome to get out as you can probably see because you've actually got the VW headlights there and you have to sort of hook them around them to get the axle out. But it's in pretty good nick, it's all straight although it's very tired looking so we're going to obviously clean this up. The wheels as you can see uh, are going to need some work on them. The axles are bent, I'm going to straighten them out as best I can. And as you can probably see here the hubcaps, all the silver paint's gone off of them and there's dirt stuck in it so I'm going to have to give them a good clean out. Right, here's the old paint stripper, uh, power strip I think this stuff is the stuff I use. And just one big glob of that. And I'll just agitate that all over the model as I've done in previous videos and as everybody else does. Again, people's choices are aircraft stripper, citrus stripper or your random normal stripper. This is just me random normal stripper. Right, so let's turn our attention to the base of the car. Now as you can see, very, very tarnished. And I'm going to use my big grinding wheel. This is an 8-inch uh, wire wheel here. I've used the little ones, as you know, and I've not been very impressed with them. They keep falling apart, and they don't really do or get, uh, create much of an effect. And as you can probably see here, I've only been on this half of the, the, the base, and it's come up like a new base. So it depends how hard you push, obviously. I'm not going to be pushing too hard whatsoever, because some people say this might be a bit aggressive, but uh, as I say, it depends how hard you push. I'm only putting light pressure on there as you can see and I think you'll find that the end result speaks for itself. Now I've done as I say three or four of these cars now and I've not been able to achieve this finish with very similar bases with them little small wire wheels. Uh, so I could, I could replate but just goes to show you that that was the original looking zinc, zinc plate and this is what it's turned into just using the right tools. Right, time to tackle the corrosion on the main shell of the Beetle. As you can see, it's quite marked all over. It's not uh, dented in any way. This is just sort of corrosion which has uh, appeared probably where the paint's chipped off. So we've got to tackle that. So initially, what I'm going to do is just use some 500 wet and dry paper and a little drop of water. And it's making an improvement, but uh, as you can probably tell, these little cars are very, very fiddly to work on and getting in all the nooks and crannies with a decent sized stroke is nigh on impossible. And also you don't want to be sanding away the details of the car, so you've got to watch out for that one as well. So as you can see there, I'm trying to get around the light fitting, very, very difficult, and the overall effect isn't as good as I would have expected. So what I actually did was put it on the wire wheel, and I'm sure you can see now that uh, it's actually brought that tired old zinc plating with corrosion on it's brought it up absolutely lovely and that is the big wire wheel as opposed to the little wire wheel so it just shows you using the right things can make a big difference now i'm just taking out some of these small manufacturing casting defects with a small riffler file they were just uh, rough edges basically around the windows there they was obviously not done when the car was actually mass produced so to speak but i've got a little bit more time i can do it Right, so here we are with our little polished body. I'm just going to give it a clean now with some panel wipe. Now this is something which you may think that it looks clean, although you've wire brushed it and stuff like that. You've got to be aware that there are contaminants on the surface because we've actually been sanding or grinding down the surface. And this is, a, as I say, a panel wipe, which is a bodywork chemical. You can use acetone, I suppose, and uh, that does a similar job. But just give it a good clean over before you actually apply your spray as what I'm doing here. Right, so now time to actually drill the post and get the rivet sorted out. Now as you can see, this takes a lot smaller rivet. Those are the normal ones that I put in, the larger ones. And this post is a lot smaller than the rest. So lucky enough, I've got these smaller rivets as well. And I'm just gonna drill it out here as I normally do, taking me time not to burst out the sides as I have done before. And as you can see, this small rivet goes in absolutely lovely in this post. So I'm very happy with that. Right, so now I'm going to apply my Tamiya White Fine Primer. And I'm going to give it a good liberal coat. Start, I like to start off underneath when I do this. 
just around the bottom edges so that I'll get all the wheel arches in and also the bottom trim as well. And again, give it a good liberal coating. And as you can see there, we've got another coat. And I will give this one more coat. I'll allow this time to dry before we then move on to our top coat. Right, okay, then time to add some color. Now I've got some X2 white here and some X9 brown, both Tamiya paints. And um, I'm gonna add my normal 20 to 25 drops of uh, my base paint, which is gonna be the white in this case. And I'm just adding, as you can see, one tiny drop of that brown. Uh, it's the smallest drop I can actually produce. And as you can see, it turned into chocolate milkshake. So this was obviously not the color I was looking for. So I had to, again, rebatch, so to speak. And this time I just sucked up a little bit of the actual brown that I'd mixed up and dropped one drop of that into there. And that gave me just the right tint to take the white, the brightness off of the white. So I was happy with that. So this is me Evolution air, air gun, uh, spray gun rather. And as you can see, you don't have to mix up much paint at all. This tends to do one car, I find. And I like to have a little adjustment and the spray before I actually spray the vehicle. And as normal, I like to spray from underneath first to get all the wheel arches in and also the insides of the window edges. I should have had grey primer on this one, but I didn't have any because it's quite hard to see the white on white, so to speak. And as you can see there, the first coat's gone on lovely. I end up giving this uh, two coats in total, just uh, with a 10 to 15 minute window in between flash off time. And not a lot of people do, but I like to put lacquer on top of mine to protect the surface. And again, I used 20 drops of Mr. Is it Mr. Color I think I've got here? Yeah. And also they're leveling thinner. And I mix that at a one to one ratio. People do it thinner. Some people do it a little bit thicker. I'm happy with this, it works for me, and that's what I use. Good stir up now. And again, small amounts. Look how little that amount is I'm putting in there, and that done the whole car. So again, I like to put on a couple of coats of this. You'll only see the one coat speeded up, but uh, as I say, again, 10 to 15 minutes bef between coats, just to let it tack off. And I'm happy with that result. So I let that stand for overnight and I'm very, very happy with the result there. I'm not gonna bother polishing it. I don't think you should polish restoration cars. It's not a custom. It comes out of the factory. They don't get polished in the factory, so that's the reason why I don't polish them. Now I'm trying something new here. Someone did suggest to me the brightness of the zinc plate underneath could tarnish over time and uh, they uh, said, would it, work if you lacquered it so I am trying it I'm not saying it's gonna I'm gonna do this all the time it does look better the writing looks a bit softer but the proof will come when we actually look at it at the end okay so here we are at my PC I've just run off a couple of uh, well 10 in fact of these 137 numbers and I've measured 10 millimeters and 7 millimeters in height I've transferred it over to this page and print them out on my inkjet printer this is a water slide transfer and i'm just giving them a coat of just normal clear varnish this seals in the ink so that when you put them in the water they don't run and bleed so quite essential quite essential to do that and uh yeah that's as simple as it is and let's just take a look at what it did look like at the beginning as you can see very very play worn lots of paint chips the body was separating from the underside and it was basically in a sorry state until we done this to it. And I hope you'll agree that uh, it's more than 10 times better, I would imagine. It's 100 times better. As you can see, I fixed the sagging caravan towing hook there and also the body and the base at the front doesn't now separate. I managed to spread the front headlights a little bit and that's what hooks the actual front in. And as you can see, I did varnish or lacquer the underside to protect it. And we'll see how it goes. It looks okay. Uh, I may do it again. I can read everything what's on there. And I hope you'll agree that this has turned out very, very nice compared to what it did look like. You can see the sagging toe hook there. A lot of people do chop them off, but uh, obviously I didn't and I managed to straighten it up. Anyway, hope you enjoyed this restoration. I'll see you in the next one and bye for now.